Well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your compassion, your mercy. Father, we just thank you for you, for your heart. And Father, we thank you for how you've changed our hearts. Uh, wow, Lord, we'll never be exactly like you, but we can only strive to be better. And so we strive to be more like you. Well, Father, we're made in your image, and we're so grateful. So Father, we praise you here this morning. Ah, bless everybody that's here seeking your heart, Father. And we are seeking your word as well, and we look forward to that. So, Father, thank you, and we praise you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, that's worship. Almighty God, my Redeemer, my hiding place, my safe refuge, no other name like Jesus, no power can stand against you, my feet are planted on this rock. Some possible faces, huh? Show me your possible face. Come on, yeah. Give the Lord a hand, another hand clap here. Woo! Give him glory.
of all our blessings. In fact, you're the source of all good things. We agree with you, Lord, and we agree with every word of yours. We, with, we agree with your will, Lord, for our lives. We give you our love and adoration this morning as we worship. As we worship you, Lord, the Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. There's no other like you. You are forever, and we praise you and proclaim you as king 
In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. One of our visitors here this morning, somebody that I haven't seen for a while, Greg Loretta. Hey! Good to see him. Uh, I used to have hair like Greg's, but it all fell out. So, <laughs> some things come, you know, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Yesterday, we uh, attended the memorial service for Clayton Suey at uh, Callahale Church, and I saw many people there that I hadn't seen for 10, 12, 15 years, or maybe more. And I was surprised by how slow they walked. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized I'm walking the same speed, but life has a way of going on. We, life keeps going and we slow down, just like Pastor had said, we get slower. But that is, the circle of life, if you want to call it that. But on the front of this recipe book uh, is Isaiah 58, 10, and 11. And I, for some reason, I thought it would be very appropriate for this morning. So I'm going to read it for you. And he says, feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as light as noon. The Lord will guide you continually giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Let's pray. Father God, you have blessed us abundantly in all areas of our life. We, we, I've said before, we cannot count the blessings that you have poured down upon us. And now we just come, we give back to you just a small fraction of what you have blessed us with so that that in turn may use, be used to spread your word throughout the world. We ask that you take it and increase it and use it for your purposes. Amen. So again, the offering bowl is in the back and in the front. I had to make sure it was there. Amen. Amen, amen. Give us water when we are dry. Give us water when we are dry. Maybe now you guys walking on dry land, man. You need water. Maybe some of you walking on dry land, you're looking back. Don't look back. Don't be like Lot's wife. What happened to her when she looked back? Hmm? She turned into a pillar of salt. It's too late, man. The day's coming. Be ready. Read your word. Read your word every day. Read it. Study it. Believe it. Apply it. Time is at hand. Let Jesus water you this morning. The living water come upon you right now. The living water come upon you right now.
Father, we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you for today, bringing us here into your house, Lord, to simply raise our arms and our hearts up to you. Lord, today is a day that we come before you with open hearts, minds, our souls, open to receive what it is that you have for us, Lord. Lord, as we gather, we always ask of blessings and receiving blessings and how can we be blessed. But Lord, today I say, how can we bless you? As today is your day, let us be a blessing to you through praising, through worshiping, through glorifying you as the one and only God of, of all things, of our very lives, our hearts pour out to you. So, Lord, this day is yours. I just pray for the remainder of the day that whatever is said and done, let it be applicable to our lives in every area. Lord, we are so blessed to be here today. We love you. We just pray these things in your son's mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let's go ahead and release our youth for their time of instruction. Glad to see everybody here today. It's nice. I, I started getting warm, and we had the doors open, and I was getting warm, and I told Caleb, I said, I, I said I'm sweating. And uh, I said, are you sweating? He goes, ah, no, I'm, he's wearing shorts, by the way, and a t-shirt. And I said, are you sweating? He says, oh, no, I'm okay. And then I sat there for a minute, I thought, well, I've got to stand up and preach. Let's shut the door. I'm going to do, tell PJ to shut the doors and turn those ACs on. So that's why the ACs are on, because I was sweating. Was anybody else getting hot? Yeah? yeah? Make me feel better about the decision to close that and turn those ACs on? A reminder, we do serve JC, not AC. Right? Okay, anyways. Nobody's really too happy today. Is anybody happy today? Come on, let's be happy. You, you Listen, when you are able to come and serve Jesus Christ and worship with with your brothers and sisters in his house, it should be a day full of joy. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what trials or tribulations or obstacles or feelings you're dealing with, feelings. Who likes feelings? Those nasty feelings that drag you down. Feelings. You know, there's a lot of talk about feelings nowadays, isn't there? Feelings. More than feelings. And right now, everybody's going, right now, we feel we're happy that pastor is not part of the worship team. And that feeling is okay. That feeling is okay. Many of our decisions are based on feelings, right? We live in a society that is all about feelings. If you feel this way, then it's justified in every area. If you feel like a dog, you can identify as a dog. If you feel like a cat, you can identify as a cat. Just make sure you meow all the time properly. If you feel like a different sex, well, guess what? Go to a doctor and change your sex and be a different sex because that's how you feel. You feel happy, that's okay. Feel sad, that's okay. Feelings, there's so much talk about feelings in different areas. I could do an entire series on every Sunday for the rest of the year just on feelings. That's the truth of it. But should we be putting so much emphasis on how we feel? It's a good question. Should we disregard our feelings altogether? Let's see what we can find out about our feelings today. First point is this. Let's dig right into it. Here's the first point is this. Our heart can't be trusted. Feel free to follow along. Notes through the bulletin or on the Bible app. If you don't know how to work the Bible app, spend an hour with me after church. I'll go through it with you. Very simple. A lot of things you can do with that. Okay. Our heart can't be trusted. Cannot be trusted. You see, in our society, most of us have been taught this, is that uh, we're taught to follow our heart, aren't we? That's what we're told. Whenever you, you feel like your heart is the way you should go, that's the way you should go. Just follow your heart. Well, I don't know the decision to make. Just follow your heart. Just follow your heart. That's what we're told. Whatever you're feeling is right for you. That's what we are taught. But we have got to see that our heart cannot be trusted, friends. Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us, this is scripture, tells us the heart is deceitful. But we're saying follow your heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Who can understand it? That's true when it comes to feelings and heart and love. and this. Who can understand that stuff? It's like you need to have a degree just to understand how your heart works as far as the emotions go and what you feel and how you feel. You see, this is it. The truth is this, is that the heart distorts reality. Let me share with you what I mean. If you feel alone, well, you're going to convince yourself that you are alone. If you feel that you're alone, you can sit there and tell yourself, I am a loser. I'm a loser. Well, guess what? You are going to convince yourself that you are a loser. If you feel unloved and say, I, I feel so unloved, I feel unloved, guess what? You will be unloved. If you sit there and say, God doesn't love me. God doesn't care about me. I feel like he's not around me. I feel like he hates me. Well, you'll start feeling that way, and that reality becomes reality within your life. You see, we have a tendency to feed negative feelings to the point of making them a reality. 
don't we? We can also distort reality by feeding it our positive feelings as well. When we feel secure in our good deeds, we convince ourselves that we are right with God, and when we do something good, our heart feels good about doing something good, so then we start looking more of the deeds and the works than the actual faith and belief. You look at doing positive things, and you know there's not a bad thing about that, but What I'm talking about is when we put too much emphasis upon those good feelings, we can really, truly distort reality. And that will keep us from seeing that our acceptance before God is not based in deeds. It's just not. It's based in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone, and our heart can distort reality at times. It will distort God's will. When I use my will, my heart, my determination in what I believe, I dismay God's approval and what God has called me to do. I put too much emphasis on me and on how I feel rather than seeking the truth in what God says for my life. If we don't light our heart up with God's truth, then we will have problems. We'll be in trouble. We will convince ourselves that our heart is God's truth, amen? That's what we'll do. That's why it's deceitful, because it will deceive everything that God has created to be true, to be just, to be what it should be. We change things into more of a fleshly thing than a godly thing, because we like to be comfortable in life, don't we? I was sweating. Turn the ACs on. I've got to stand up and preach. I've got to be comfortable when I share the word of God. Oh, now I feel really bad, right? Now I'm sitting here beating myself up. Oh, I hate coming to church when the pastor talks about you. It makes you feel convicted. I'm going to have a long talk with the pastor when we're done with this sermon about convicting me over that. We convince ourselves that what we want to do is God's will when in reality, when really what we want is we simply want to feel so we try to make things go our way, so we want it to be our way, so we're really not doing God's will, we're really doing our will, and we're trying to line our hearts up with that. So when we feel justified in our thoughts, we feel justified in our actions, we're going to convince ourselves that we're undeniably correct in our thinking. There's great danger in that, friends. Listen to the book of Proverbs here. Proverb 14.12. Proverb 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. Now listen, I can be going along, I can be thinking I'm right because my heart tells me so. I can be just walking through life, telling me, oh, everything's good, everything's great because my heart tells me so, but I can really be unwittingly moving toward my own death and not even knowing this. This shows me how dangerous it is to trust our feelings. Erwin W. Lutzer, wonderful quote I want to share. He says, a Christian life based on feeling is headed for a gigantic collapse. He says, I shouldn't just follow my heart. But once again, our society says, follow your heart. We teach our kids that, don't we? Because we want them to be the best that they can be. We want to encourage them to achieve great mountaintop experiences in life. To see success in every area. And we tell them you can do whatever you want to do. Follow your heart. But what we need to be doing is saying, look, do whatever you can. But do it with God in your life. Right? Instead of following your heart, we need to say follow Jesus Christ. Give it to God. Allow him to guide and direct your steps to find greatness in life. But we say, no, follow your heart. Good Christians say this, follow your heart. Friends, there should never, ever be anything wrong with saying, follow your Jesus. Our hearts will give us a false sense of security. Feelings can give us a false sense of security, right? In our own power, we feel secure. We convince ourselves that because of what we've accomplished, we are secure, 
we view prosperity as security. But in reality is this, is that in these things, there is no real assurance. And we, if we feel mighty in our own power, God will need to demonstrate his. God's eyes are on his ways and not our ways. We sit there and think, well, God isn't really doing much in my life because this is the way I feel and I accomplished this and this is what I did and I feel this way. And we place God in a box off to the side. When we rely more upon ourselves and our feelings, we have separated ourselves from God unwillingly, really not knowing that we did so, but we did. We do. There are many times within my life where I will accomplish something, I will do something, and I'll sit back and go, man, I'm so glad that I did that. I worked hard for this, and I start looking at myself thinking, me, 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 me. And then I, it hits me like a ton of bricks going, whoa, wait a minute. It's not me, 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 me. Even though I feel really good, and I know I worked hard on this, and I know I did this, I did it because of God. God Helped me. God guided me. It's because of God that I've achieved what what I've achieved, not me. We feel secure with the Lord based on how we feel about ourselves. I'm a good person. I'm okay. You're okay. Hey, we're all okay. But when we do that, we're oblivious to the imminent danger here. If our security is based in feelings, we are in trouble. So, What do we need to do? Trust in the Lord, not our own feelings. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all your heart. There's the heart. Trust in the Lord, not yourself. In the Lord, not your feelings. I can trust my heart when my heart trusts the Lord. Amen? Lean not on your own understanding. Don't simply go on how you feel. In all ways, submit to him. In all ways. We need to to simply determine if we feel the way we feel and if it lines up with God's will. Why are we feeling this way? Is this what God wants of us? Or is this me feeling the way I'm feeling in my fleshly desires? And he will make your path straight. We won't go wrong following the Lord's path. We we just won't. But when we follow our own feelings, you see, we are left regretting our decisions. There's a quote that says, emotions don't make a good engine, they only make a good caboose. (laughs) Have you ever heard somebody say this? Maybe you've said this. I don't trust anyone but myself. Hmm? Right? I don't trust anyone but myself. Friends, how is that dangerous? When I lean on my own understandings, you see, I I tell myself that my instincts are never wrong. Right? Have, Have any of you ever made a mistake? I'm just asking. I don't know. I'm lying. I do know you have. Right? We've all made mistakes, and you will make more mistakes. We're not perfect, so why is it that we only trust ourselves? Are we so perfect that we trust ourselves knowing that we'll never make a mistake? When we do that, we're, we're really in deep water here, dangerous water when we do that. What we're doing is we tell ourselves that our instincts are never wrong, and we convince ourselves that the little voice inside of us is always telling us the truth. Because we're following our heart, once again, you see. We're following our heart. That's the truth. We're, we're, we're following this. So when other people try to speak into, into our lives, uh, we won't listen to them. Because we're following the only person that we trust, which is us, right? We're telling ourselves that we are different and we speak truth in our lives. And then we go by how we feel and we end up doing great harm to ourselves and, and even others. Sometimes I believe that that my instincts are correct, don't you? But the ironic thing is this. When they're wrong, we don't take proper notice of that. And when a situation arises again, we still feel that we can trust our feelings. Proverb 28, 26 says, Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Now, Up to this point, did you think I'm just speaking opinion? 
Proverbs 28, 26 says those who trust in themselves are fools. Guys, I'm not calling you a fool. I've trusted myself many times. I call myself a fool. But those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Do I call myself wise? Yeah, because I try to walk in wisdom as well. And I want to stay safe. The problem with feelings is that they change, don't they? Oh, they change. Think about your life. You know, I'm 51 years old. And I think back to when I had a girlfriend back in the kindergarten age. Oh, she was cute. I love this girl. I don't remember her name, but I loved her. Do I love her today? No, I don't love her today. Don't even know who she is. Have you ever had a favorite meal, right? Something that you just loved, and then all of a sudden things change throughout the years? You don't love this way. You don't feel that way. You don't this way. Things change. Things change all the time. Feelings change all the time. You feel one way one day, different from another day. You see, you can feel one way about something today, and then tomorrow be totally indifferent about that. What doesn't change, however, is this, is God's truth. God's truth will never change. Therefore, we need to trust his wisdom and not our feelings. We need to allow the Lord to reveal reality to us. We talked about reality last week. Reality is important. When we feel like we're alone in this world, we've got to remember the reality of what Jesus tells us, that we're not alone. Matthew 28, 20 says, and surely I am with you always. We can bank on that. And friends, even when you feel abandoned, we need to remember what God said in the book of Hebrews 13, 5. He tells us, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. When we feel like a failure, a loser, a nobody, we need to remember the truth, the reality found in the book of Psalms. 139.14, where God tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Even when we feel unloved. There's a reality to that in Romans 5.8. Where we're told that God demonstrates his own love for us. In this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. These are promises that we can bank on that goes against these weird feelings that we think that we feel one way to a different day. You see, God knows we have a tendency to act according to how we feel because we're fleshly creatures. We need the reality of God's word to simply counteract our unrealistic feelings. He wants us to realize that so often how we feel isn't real. That's why we need to rely on God to show us the reality in any given situation. Whenever we feel strongly about something, we need to take it to the Lord because he knows reality. Anybody ever feel like there was a boogeyman in your room with the lights off? And you turn the lights on, you realize there's no boogeyman in there, but you felt like there was. And in your mind, you felt it so strongly that he was there. So strongly, right? No matter what your parents told you, he was under the bed ready to grab your feet. He's ready to take you down because you felt it and you believed it. And then what happens? You turn the light on and there's nothing there. Jesus is the light of our lives, friends. All this negative muck and horrible things that we put into our, our lives, the feelings that we, we swallow and we believe, that we make this false reality that we spoke about last week, that we're continuing on now. We believe it so much, but then the light of Jesus comes into our lives and opens up a whole new world for us and paints the picture of reality. That what we're doing is hurting ourselves and harming ourselves. We're lying to ourselves because of our feelings, because of our hearts. We're following in our own understanding, not his understanding. We're following in our reality rather than his We make snap judgments based on how things appear. We base reality on first impressions. Often, our strong feelings are wrong feelings. And if we make decisions based on these strong feelings, we can end up doing damage. An airplane pilot, any pilots in here? An airplane pilot. They've got to refuse to trust their own instincts and emotions during storms. Instead of trusting the, 
their, their own feelings. They need to trust the instrument panel on what's going on, on what they need to do. And, and then if they experience vertigo, vertigo during this time, their instincts can be wrong because of the way they're feeling. And I think about these pilots, and just as they can get jostled around within their, their lives of flying, and they can lose their sense of bearing and where they're at on the ups and downs and knowing where they're going, we too can get jostled around in life. Where we miss our bearings, and we get jostled to where we don't know what's up, and we don't know what's down. We don't know where we're at and where we're going, and we try to base on how we feel and what we need to do on our hearts and our feelings when we simply need to stop, drop on, to our knees and cry out to Jesus and say, guide me, take my hand, guide my heart. Because my understandings are wrong. And I know I can trust you, God and his word, no matter how solid we think we are about something, we need to allow the Lord to reveal reality in our lives. So maybe you're sitting here this morning and you hear what I'm saying, but you're telling yourself something. Here's my last point. My last point is this. You're telling yourself, I don't feel like it. (laughs) I don't feel like it. Friends, sometimes our feelings drives us to do things we shouldn't. Other times, our feelings prevent us from doing things that we should. We avoid doing something because we don't feel like it. I'm just not feeling it today. Friends, I'm sure that Jesus did some things that he didn't feel like doing. I'm sure of that. Can you think of any? I can think of one in particular that's right behind me. Part of the Christian life as a servant of Jesus involves doing things that might not appeal to us. It involves things that will take us out of our comfort zones. Usually when we don't feel like doing something is when we need to do them the most. When we don't feel like coming to church, perhaps this is the biggest reason to get up and be in church. I'm sure that Jesus didn't feel like going to the cross to pay that ultimate penalty for our sins, but guess what? He did it. He did it. And praise God that he did. Right? So is it too much to ask for us to serve him when we don't feel like it? We do other things we don't feel like doing. We get out of bed to go to work. We don't feel like going to work, but you still get up. You still go to work, don't you? So why should a little headache or a little tiredness keep us from coming to church, from serving, from doing his will, from even praying? So many times we don't feel like doing God's will because of our flesh, because of silly little things. I think it boils down to priorities is what it really boils down to. Why should our aches and pains keep us from reaching out to people? James 4.17 says, Anyone then who knows the, the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. If we don't do what we know we need to do because we don't feel like it, we are committing a sin. James 4, 17 tells us this. You know, D.L. Moody once said this. He said that obedience means marching right on whether we feel like it or not. Many times we go against our feelings. Faith is one thing. Feeling is another. Friends, feelings shouldn't dictate whether or not we're going to do what we need to do. You know, the trick is this. When are our feelings justified? Because feelings are created. There's, there's reason for our feelings, right? So when are they justified? I believe that our feelings are justified when we feel for others. 2 Corinthians 11, 28 through 29 says, when we, we read where Paul here, he had a deep concern for the church. He said, besides everything else I face Daily, the pressure of my concern for all the churches, who is weak and I do not feel weak, who is led into sin and I do not inwardly burn. He felt connected to them here on a deeper level, on an emotional level. When someone is sad, we 
can be sad with them. When someone fell, falls into the sin, we can burn with the passion to help them be restored to find that forgiveness. We display our compassion towards others when we can relate to what they're feeling, what they're going through, that their feelings are legitimate. Prayed for today by Robbie because my mother passed was one of the best things that could have happened to me. That's amazing. That shows me that I've got a church that loves me. I'm going to be very open with you here. I've never felt a church that loves me as much as this church. It's the truth. I'm telling you. And I'm not bad-mouthing any of the churches I've served with in the past, but I can guarantee you, and I know this from experience, this is my fourth senior pastor position, I believe. I can tell you, none of the other churches would have ever have called me forward to pray for me like that. Is it a need? Yes, it's a need. Thank you so much. Domi, thank you. It shows compassion. It shows feelings that are justified. It shows what God is saying to us when he, when he shares what Paul says to the Corinthians on how we need to be connected emotionally and spiritually and lovingly with other people because these feelings are legitimate. These feelings are pure. These feelings are being used wisely as they are given to God as he is guiding that heart. People may drive us nuts at times, guys. We may feel the direct opposite of how we want to respond to other people because people are just flawed individuals, right? We may convince ourselves that what we're, what we're feeling lines up with God's truth when it doesn't. When we feel strongly about something, we need to humbly look at what the scriptures tells us for God's direction. We need to seek counsel and prayer from godly people. When we feel a certain way about something, we, we need to truly examine this, whether or not our feelings are justified or substantiated. Finally, listen, I believe that when we experience consequences for poor choices, there should be a certain feelings that are associated with that. When we sin, we should feel shame. We should feel that. There's that feeling that we should feel, and this is a good thing. If there are no feelings of remorse, then we're in trouble. How many true crime stories have you seen? I, I don't even know the technical term for it, but there's a medical term for this, where people will commit horrible, unspeakable things, and they feel no remorse for this. I, I, I saw a young man. He had done all kinds of crazy things, and I seen it on the television where he had no remorse. They called it whatever sin, syndrome or whatever it is. It amazed me. He didn't know he was doing right from wrong, but thank God we do and we feel shame when we do. It is a feeling that keeps us in line, that helps us understand that it's not right to do certain things and to feel a certain way that we need to give it to God. We should feel happy in positive situations. We should have those feelings of joy within our hearts, within our lives. These are justified. If we have no feelings, what it does is it indicates a cold heart. We should feel sad when tragedy strikes. We should feel happy during those positive times. I should feel passionate about my relationship with Jesus each and every day. Where you have no emotions, you're disconnected from life. Our feelings are justified when we show a correct response of what's going on. Feelings. Feelings can be very legitimate and necessary, but we've got to be careful, friends, that we're not directing our lives based on just feelings. And that's my point today is that if you're living a life just on feelings and feelings alone, that's when things will get very troublesome within your life. We need to have godly reactions to our feelings. If we let go of our feelings and we allow them just to go out of control, then we're going to make foolish choices in life. 
That's a good depiction of what happens with some teenagers or some young people in their early 20s that don't know Jesus. They're living for the world. They're doing this and that. And we look at them and we say, oh, they're just young. They're immature. They're living on their feelings. Friends, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a mature believer in Christ, there's a difference in living off of feelings, isn't there? And living with Christ in our lives. I remember my life before Jesus doing things within my life and looking back the next day, regretting my decisions because of how I felt. Have you ever done that? You ever acted a certain way because your flesh crawled up into your very throat and made you say some things or you swung a fist or said this or that and the next thing you know, a day or two later when things calm down, you're like, oh, I was an idiot. Why did I act this way? Because of feelings. Because you were following your heart and not Jesus. How we feel matters. But how we react and work through those feelings is even more important. When was the last time you've acted amongst your feelings in a positive way in what you know God is calling you to do? And what I mean by that is in life in general, when we see things. Yesterday, a great example that just came to me. I'm driving, Stacy and I are driving into Lehui, and we're going through Hanamalu, and there's this man standing on the corner in front of Kotohikis. A howling man standing there, big beard, no shoes, had an Aloha shirt opened up, shorts. What struck me odd about this man was the blood. He had blood all over his chest. And he's standing there doing this thing. And you can tell he's mentally out there or drunk or something. I don't know. But as we start getting closer to him, and I notice the blood, I notice he had a big cut on his head. And blood is just pouring all down. And you know what Stacy and I did? Oh, look at that guy. Oh. And we kept on going. Mm. We drove right past him. Shame on me. Shame on me. My feelings of fear of this man kept me from doing the right thing. What should I have done? We should have stopped and pulled over. I should have talked to this man. If I was afraid of my life, I should have at least pulled over and called 911. But what did I do? I acted poorly based on my feelings, not on God's feelings. And for that, I had to pray and ask for forgiveness for that. Has that ever happened to you, friends? That's what I mean when I talk about feelings of doing the things we ought to do versus the things that we don't do. Friends, I'm going to ask you to stand with me today, and we're going to close through a time of worship And as we go through worship, it can be a great thing of feeling the joy of Christ and the spirit of Jesus. We always talk about that, and that's wonderful. But if it is not a justified thing of Christ through which we feel, then what's the point? Dear Heavenly Father, I love you, and I praise your name in all things. I pray that today we can feel you, that we can see you, that you are within our hearts and helping us to make the right decisions on what we do and with what we don't do. Lord, we want to live our lives for you and not for ourselves. We want to follow you and not just our hearts. We want to see our lives change, our world change. We want to simply live for you. Lord, today is your day in every sense of the, the word, saying we give it all, we give it all. Lord Jesus, we love you. And as we open up our hearts to you today, we just simply ask you to fill them. Fill them with whatever it is you have for us. We love you, Jesus, and we just praise your name. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand Everything
upset and confused when life doesn't work out for us. When things go poorly or bad, we sit there and cry and moan and complain. Why? Well, ask yourself, were you following the self? Were you following the heart? Or were you following Jesus? Because friends, I'm here to tell you the truth is that Jesus will never, ever let you down. He won't. He won't. So let's change our perspective in how we live life and our choices in what we do in and out of church and live for Jesus Christ. 
and allow him to guide and direct all decisions made within your very life, to see and to reach those mountaintop experiences. And friends, even in the valleys, knowing he was there, not forsaking you, but he is guiding you and loving you. Friends, thank you for being with us today. And thank you for just simply being you today and allowing God to speak to you. Continue loving God and living aloha. And we'll see you next time. Amen. And all the people said amen. Just don't matter.